following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Thank God it's Friday. It's Friday night here in Asia. I'm stuck at the office. You guys are just getting up in the morning. It's a different scene altogether. But it's kind of cool easing into the trading day uh, a little in a more gentle way than just being woken up in the morning and slamming some coffee and then the market hitting you in the face. It's kind of nice to kind of, for me, to gather myself and get the news read and, uh, you know, listen to the Bloomberg, listen to all the idiots on CNBC and kind of ease into it. So it's kind of nice on that note. We're going to like take a look at the Shanghai really quick. And again, this thing is defying all logic. It's above 5,000. We actually had to close above 5,000 today. And we talked pretty religiously about not shorting this thing. Uh, and when we actually came down into this inflex point in the dailies, it was just pretty much no new profile. Brett still stayed positive. You had to take a shot down there. And lo and behold, we're off to the races again, making new highs. This is the 240s. Had a little bit of a disturbance there. Talked about not getting back in the water until we got back above 47.22. That was probably a good thing to, to keep in mind. But, you know, uh, as we look at the scanner and as we look at the daily on the Shanghai, we're just massively in cooperation with the internals of the index on what's going on with the index in general. But as you know, we've been looking at the S&P situation, and I'm going to go down the heat map. Ranking our heat map on the daily breaths, we've got this now 30, 31% crossover on the S&Ps. And if you've been watching the show, you know that we have gone into the S&Ps. I'm going to go right there as soon as I can get the S&Ps up here. <coughs> the past, <coughs> excuse me, the past couple of weeks. Sorry, guys, let me get my chart back to normalcy here. Past couple of weeks. You know, we've been talking, you know, the breath's been kind of weird. We kind of made these new highs on the S&Ps. When I say the breath weird, I mean, we've had a non-cooperation pretty much all along. Talking about, you know, the breath versus the price action above profiles on the daily, above profiles on the weekly. And this is why we look, have been looking for short opportunities when they were thrown out there in the lower time frames, the inflection points on the 240s. And that's kind of holding true. Even when we had this rally two or three days ago, you know, still, you know, it just wasn't getting the cooperation from the internals. And what that means is, is that most of the stocks in the S&Ps on our intermediate time frame were in a phase that were this way. We were most of this. Are, there was more stocks trading below profiles than above profiles on our intermediate slant that we look at. And now this is kind of boring itself true. And we talked about yesterday. Um, in fact, kind of leveraging off this 2117 area the day before, and then some targets down below 2099. If we could get below 2099, which it seems like we are in consolidating to possibly head lower, uh, you know, this is this is a good sign for shorts, a really good sign. But you've got that in 20 minutes, you've got that big number coming out, and you know that that's a complete throw the dice type situation. I think there's. There's probably two or three things against one thing on the, that would be beneficial to shorts and only one thing that would benefit longs here on, on that report. So, yeah, exactly, Jay. <laughs> so that's kind of what we're looking at here, pre-unemployment report numbers. Um, but, again, I think I'm a big fan of trading the reaction instead of the initial action. So, again, uh, you know, breath being what it is, I think two or three things against one for shorts there. Um uh, you know, we could have some follow through on the downside. And what's the ultimate targets on the downside, in my opinion, as it stands right now, around that 2070 area, 2070 down to 2065. 
So that's the way I'm looking at this. Um, another thing that's going on is you guys probably have not been living in a cave. You've heard that these guys from Greece have decided that they are going to delay a payment and consolidate it at the end of the month with another payment for like $1.3 billion. I, I, <laughs> when somebody owes you money and they're dictating when they're going to pay you back, I mean, that just doesn't, doesn't seem right in general. And the other thing that really kind of makes me sick is, you know, a guy that owes you money, when he smiles at you every time he looks at you and doesn't pay you, that's relatively irritating. Every time I look at Bloomberg, what's his name, uh, Cyprus or whatever, uh, the Greek guy, he's always smiling, patting people on the back. And uh, I'm just, I'm just thinking if I'm Merkel, I'm, I'm just gonna get a get a Gestapo to follow him home. You know, I mean, this guy's he just he, he creeps me out, and uh, it's just kind of interesting and funny, really. <laughs> so that's the that's the situation on Greece, and that's gonna. You know, it's affecting the euro a little bit, not much. I mean, the numbers coming out of Europe, obviously, economic-wise, are pretty pretty cool here. But this is the euro situation. Uh, here we go. Unfair highs, 112.25. We were hoping, I mean, I was hoping that we get up into them. These are our weekly numbers on the euro. I was really hoping that we get up into this 114.67 area. Didn't quite get there. Got as high as 113.80. Um yesterday and and uh now we're kind of coming back same similar situation as we had that unfair high uh two weeks ago almost hit um and i you know I, i'm looking at this that we're not going to probably have any long-term technical damage on the weeklies the dailies we kind of closed above come back and retested it but i truly feel <coughs> that the euro has probably seen its better short squeeze rallies here um, and I'm a big fan of still trying to use inflection points, namely the 112.25 area to, to leverage this off the short side again now that we've kind of gotten and might get back down below here. Now, the unemployment report obviously is is something that's going to affect the dollar, which is going to kind of inversely kind of start bleeding into the euro. So, again, I think this is kind of a wait and see if you want to be you know, somewhat as smart as a trader, trade the reaction again. Let's take a look at the dollar while we're talking about these relationships in general. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not. There's a lot of people out there now talking. The dollar's going to go down. <laughs> the got the dollar's going to go down. Um, it's seen its better days. I'm not so sure about that. Um, he, here's the situation on, on the dailies. We've obviously had some some technical damage here. We got to get back above 96.38 as a buy point on the dollar or get down to this 9387 area now. So the short term situation on the dollar, that was kind of a long term view. The short term situation <coughs> is this. Um, you've got a little bit of a lid. You got to get through here on the short term 958788. That would kind of make me feel better about going long on the very short term on the dollar. <laughs> I'm reading Fletch's statement here. Yes. I don't know if you can throw everybody in the same basket in, in the in the Greek world, but uh, it's uh, it, it's just really irritating to watch the guy smile and shake everybody's hand to me, and and then he's calling the shots on when he's going to pay them back. I mean, it, there's no mystery here; they're not going to pay it back. You know, I mean, that's you know, you know the deal when somebody somebody owes you money and they smile and they kind of you know, eh, it's not happening. I'd, I'd place a huge bet on that. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Um, here's the numbers on the NASDAQ. And again, the NASDAQ breasts a little bit better than the, than the S&Ps. 4462, 4463 is that big number on the NASDAQ. We get below there, we're going to hear some pretty serious whoosh sounds because that's a lot closer on a relative scale than the S&Ps <coughs> profiles are. And if you if you want to get some, some cool insight on the profiles in general um, and how those breadth statistics really pan out over time. I'm going to show you guys. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys today when we come back from the first break. We did quite a few studies um, on breadth crossover. So like being in the market all the time, for instance. So I'm going to go to our daily. This is the Shanghai. These are breadth crossovers. Here's our 60-minute breadth crossovers, always in the market, long or short, back five years. 
on the Shanghai. There's the there's the stats there. This has nothing to do with profiles on the index itself. These have to do with breadth crossovers. And here's we're going to drill down into this a little bit better uh, when we come back from break. But here's the tie set 100 daily, 240, 60 minute. This will give you an idea of how powerful it is to have that breadth information available when you're trying to trade some of these indices or, or futures on these indices. It's a real cool overhanging tone or tie to the marketplace, how um, Basil coined at one time. I just love that term. Um, and, and, you know, as we trade S&Ps and use that breadth, as we're kind of talking about now, as we looked at the S&Ps earlier, um, the S&P breadth crossover system doesn't look that great in itself on its own, as we just showed some of those indices. And we did about 80 back test results on four different time frames on you know, I think about 17 or 18 exchanges uh, in the past week or so. And I'm showing you some of that research right now. But the S&P is actually, and these are based on closes of that time frame. So if, if a crossover happened at the beginning of the week, it didn't register on the crossover on our stats. We kind of handicapped it, worst case scenario, Friday's close to actually mark that crossover. So as we look at... Uh, you know, some of these statistics, the S&Ps, a um, little bit more difficult to trade, a little bit different animal than some of the other ones. When we combine the profiles of the index itself, combined with the breadth, with, which is a study on the internals back test, and combined with that breadth, it's, uh, it's just amazing how the profiles of the index really enhance the breadth statistics, because the breadth statistics alone... <laughs> are a little skewed because of the closing nature, uh, especially on the longer time frames of the, of the S&Ps. So again, we're going to take a look at that, that a little bit deeper when we uh, come back from break. But you know, just to get some of the, some of the usual suspects out of the way, um, obviously the 10-year and the 30-year, um, in 10, 12 minutes, we're going to probably see some mega action here. Here's the inflection points to pay attention to now on the 10-year. 126.04. We kind of closed below, go back, come back and retested that now. Um, if we get a surprise and the economic numbers are not as good as they kind of are forecasting to either be the same or better, um, this is the long term weekly. That's kind of out of play up there, but uh, you're going to see some violent reactions here. Excuse me. We're going to be right back in just a second, guys, and get into a couple other things. Hang around. with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75 percent off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. If you notice that fire extinguisher behind me, it's, that's a big deal here in this country. For some, you got to have a fire extinguisher everywhere. It's a concrete building. There's not a piece of wood, like, in the whole place, except for those shelves back there, which I don't know if that would really cause a big problem catching on fire. Maybe I'll catch it on fire later just to see what happens. But uh, it's just, there's fire extinguishers everywhere. I've never seen this in my life. And you can't get a permit without, like, 18,000 fire extinguishers in your office. Um <laughs> So uh, what we're going to talk about here is they, they allow mosquitoes, but yeah. anyway, what we're going to talk about here, uh, we're actually going to answer your question, Fletch, no, who asked that question? Russ, sorry. We're going to answer your question about the POC blue line <coughs> not being there. That's actually a really good question. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to bring Eddie on for the next segment after the unemployment report. And we're going to actually, he's going to actually answer that. I'm going to tell you in a very short Reader's Digest condensed version, he's probably going to get a long version. It's basically showing no commitment. It's a very good sign that, that there's no real commitment in that balance area. And I'm going to let him kind of expound on that a little bit when he gets on. Um, so, so. Okay, so yeah, they're they're saying they're going to be able to grab Eddie, so that that might be kind of insightful to hear from the uh, from the horse's mouth. Eddie was uh, at the genesis of a lot of the things that we do. He's actually gotten back from Moscow last night, or not last night, my time, and uh, we'll you know he's. I, I want him to come on and talk about the economic climate there. I don't think folks know how ugly it still is, and will probably get worse. Uh, based on the interest rates that are, are really still in the stratosphere up there. So it's going to be interesting 
to get him on and hear a little bit about that. Excuse me. Let's take a look at gold here. Obviously, we've had some downside activity. And uh, on our 1187 on the August contract, that's kind of the barrier of entry for longs up there right now. Um, we've kind of we started, you know, this kind of action on the August contract 1205. Um, again, not the time to go long, in my opinion. Here's the 240 situation on gold, uh, kind of just cruising through the, you know, I've just kind of suggested maybe staying away from this. You don't have anything to really hang on to on the long side at all. I'm not a, not a huge fan of going short gold, so uh, that's kind of my take on that. Uh, I've got about, let's see, two minutes left before this break, and then that, let's see, what is that? Ah, we're gonna, that's going to happen on the break itself. So, again, let's just cover a couple more things. Usual suspects will have Eddie on. Uh, going into this November bean situation, talked about this. Wasn't time to get back in the short camp yet. Got it below 9, 13 and a half, uh, kind of lurching forward here. Um, that kind of regulated us out of that trade, and we just need to sit tight on any type, type of short ideas on the November bean situation like we have before. Let's take a look at the silver trade while we're looking at gold. Uh, again, we just kind of didn't have any reasons to get on the long side of the fence here on silver. Still the case. <clears throat> Not a big fan of going short silver, so this is kind of a wait and see. I want to pull up the Aussie dollar before we go to break here. This is something um, I've been a big fan of just that that kind of short squeeze on their so, so-called better economics. It's, you know, it's bull crap, in my opinion. Um, kind of hit that 2076 target the other day and had the orange bar at the same time. That was a clear-cut sign to kind of get out of the short camp for a while. But right now, um, you know, we were up the other day around the 70, 78, 25 area, and we talked about, you know, just pass on any type of uh, long trades. If we get up into the 78, 65, that would have been a, a really killer opportunity on the short side. Now we're just kind of in the balanced area. Here is the short-term traders on the 240s. You got some leverage here, 77.39. That could be a short opportunity again there um, on the short term. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> We're still talking about Greek debt. Gotcha. Um, that's, let's see, what else we're going to cover before we get to this uh, break. We're going to hit oil really quick. Got about 20 seconds here. Uh, you guys are probably reading the OPEC news. They're not going to fiddle with uh, any type of supply. And here's the situation on oil. We talked about waiting patiently until 57.40, 57 was hit. That was hit. And we're pretty much going to stay in a range. So that was a buy opportunity. I still think we're okay on the buy side there. There's that bottom of the weekly we talked about lining up 57 into 5740 that was hit we're trading 50 854 right now <laughs> thanks guys we'll be right back thank you on If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're like me, you see the world's emerging nations as a very real opportunity, as these countries and their economies are developing right before our eyes. And you can rest assured that Everbank has spotted this opportunity too. In fact, they have just released the second running of their five-year Market Safe Futures Economy CD. This is a CD that could really deliver, but you only have until June 11th to take advantage. Consider the facts. If the future economy's currencies beat the U.S. dollar over the CD term, 
you'll get all of the upside at maturity. And should they lose, no worries. There's zero downside risk here, as you get back 100% of your deposited principal. Don't miss out. The June 11th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is an equal housing lender and member FDIC. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. You know what's cool taking something that's good for you something specifically formulated to help with weight loss better sleep stress reduction and the need to detox nico our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment but today our food sources no longer contain the vitamins minerals and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong that's why we need primal edge daily nutrition it includes a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins minerals fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form primal edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Obviously, that report not as conducive to the S&P's rallying as we... Uh, Knew that wasn't going to probably happen. So uh, I think we've got Eddie on the phone with us. Eddie, you're there. Yes, I'm here. If, if I'm in the network, uh, can you hear me? Yep, yep. Sounding good there. Um, hey, John, long man, time, long time, man. Yeah, it's, it's been at least an hour. <laughs> how, <laughs> how, how's, how's, uh, how's the jet lag coming back from Moscow, if there's any? I don't know how far we Reco are. Recovering, John, like recovering. <laughs> Not yeah. from the jet lag, but from the Moscow itself. Yeah. Right. Recovering, yeah. We always talk about when you're there. It's just hilarious that, what, what, you know, if you got dropped dropped off there, you'd have to get paid about a hundred times more to stay there. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's, it's not an exp uh, expensive city, and I don't know how they survive on the on, on, on that rate of the lifestyle. But uh, yeah, it's most one of the most expensive cities in the world. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think there's a couple other places you'd rather be, namely the south of Spain. Which is where you're at now, and uh, I can appreciate that. Um, hey, man, um, we had a good question. Um, I thought I'd pull you in for this, amongst other things. But uh, you know, one of the listeners asked, you know, they, I, you know, I'm assuming they use some of our information um, on the daily on the S and P right now. Uh, we we don't have any POC showing in the profile. It's usually unfair low POC, unfair high. So green line, blue line, red line. Um, to build the profile, and we don't have a POC on our S&P daily futures, S&P futures current profile. So the question, I kind of gave a generic uh, Reader's Digest condensed version answer. It was a, it's really a profile showing no commitment on the balance theory. So what? how could you expound on that and maybe give the guys some more information? I think we'd all love to hear that. 
Uh, yeah, well, I know I know about it, as you probably said to your viewers. I was in the creation process of all those things. Yeah, this yep. is a very good question, and those are patterns, uh, as, uh, you know, that we um, find out, we discover during the process of the uh, of building those those profiles, profile or we call boxes, right? So that's what that means. But before I start that, uh, I would say there is a couple of patterns, uh, profiles that we can extract this information uh, and uh, to our uh, to increase our edge to the favor of the user profiles mm -hmm. are uh, in couple in couple of types they are wide profiles they are narrow profiles they are in balance profiles where the, this POC not missing but it's shifted to the either unfair highs or unfair lows and those are and POCs are which are doesn't have POCs and boxes are that the PO, they doesn't have POCs at all what that means wide profiles means a be ready for the for the, the for the volatility volatility will stay in place and you can there's the patterns how to trade those profiles there's a narrow profiles which is we call them walls which uh, difference price differences between buyers and sellers very narrow when the buyers agree to the very close levels of the uh, where they buy uh, that uh, product or this uh, you know whatever uh, in, in instrument you're talking about and the price levels where they sell and we are able to see that in advance that means we having a uh, ability to pro to forecast the market condition and uh, profiles are in balance or uh, an equal distribution where the point of control is closer to the bottom or to the top of the profile to supply or to demand that also mm -hmm. means where the um, all activity shifts at to the top or uh, the upper side of the profile or to the narrow or to the lower side of the profile or the distribution that means that um, those uh, levels are have double impact that means when they cross to, uh, if the profiles if the POCs are closer to the top of the profiles when they're broken that means mm -hmm. uh, the move would be much more uh, has a much more uh, volume behind it not volume behind it, but strength or <clears throat> or um, commitment of the buyers outside either or if it helps as a resistance that means that level can be actually tracked as a uh, that stop or there's a resistance in uh, your question specific question with the uh, profiles with no POCs that's a clear information that the market is lost there are no uh, buyers or sellers in between in the middle of that distribution that means the price is all over the place, it typically jumps all over the place, and uh, it typically constitutes either or beginning of the new trend or the long-term consolidation process. So that, that means is that we have to be ready for the breakouts or breakdowns or uh, longer longer term consolidation until but that quickly uh, that information is quickly followed by new profiles which is actually leads us into the real directional trade so that's a good question and a very good question and those typically uh, John is our answer. that's a great answer okay. um, yeah that would be what, actually hmm? I tell you what let's let's you know we had this report come out 5.5 percent I think they're expecting 5.4 um, to kind of keep trailing this thing down and my goodness my charts are not coming up here on the euro um, you know you and I are always looking for opportunities on the euro to short uh, you know we did a little bit of a pre-market dissertation on this and I cannot get the mm, eh. market's moving pretty quick guys and I'm on a server uh, off of this site so we're okay here we go the euro is trading Eddie 11086 right now, just continuing to cave in. I know you can probably see the 60 minute action there. I'm waiting for our dailies to come up. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. I'm listening. Okay. Man. Okay. Yeah, I think we're getting ready to get populated on the daily here. I hope. Here we go. Please. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the scanner, which is pretty cool, and we're going to go into the Forex section and we're going to get our inflection points on the daily come heck or high water here so the usd okay so that 112.25 area we're showing the top of our box the psc in the bottom there that was that was what we were looking at right before the report to try to leverage and we always talk about you know again trading the reaction not the action letting these reports come out obviously this is um something that a lot of people are paying, paying attention to right now but uh, let's see, 108.70 on the bottom. Uh, we're kind of starting to skip below and smoke here. Our 
110.82 on the 240s, so that's good news for the shorts. We were talking about trying to get into that 114.50 area. It never got up there, Eddie, on those weekly maximum leverage points, but we at least we got back down below 112.25 to start fiddling around with this on the short side again. Um, obviously, it's a it's a it's a immediate reaction. What's your what's your thoughts on the euro in general? Is this thing just going to keep heading south now? Fundamentally, everybody knows, every dog in the world knows that uh, currency is doomed and uh, needs to go down. But again, those recent swings on daily, like five basic points, uh, five handles are up, five handles down, and then five handles up again. And now we're getting down. I think uh, that's a message that uh, <clears throat> longer term money in the U.S. will be expensive, more expensive. Uh, from this uh, good, good, good call, so-called good report on Eminis, I think the government, I think, got tired after the, you know, pushing <laughs> into the into the equity-based uh, investments right here. That's a message for the bigger people that uh, long-term money would be actually negative. It, that it, Greece impact is just you know just the technical stuff. It's not 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 even you know enough. But uh, cheaper money versus uh, longer long-term money. That's what it's played here: dollar versus euro. And uh, those uh, uh, washouts or sh shakeups of the weak shorts. That's what did happen in, in the euro. Everybody expects. Everybody in the world wait. It's 108 uh, euro to the dollar. I, I think I'm sorry, 80 cents uh, uh, euro to the dollar. But hey, well, yeah, get be be ready and you know get get in that short if if you're getting shaken out and five basic points. You know how can you stay stand on it? Yeah, uh, that helps actually. Uh, having our profile distribution areas, especially long time, long term, and know when to get in in the game, when when not to get in the game. I also was very uh, frustrated when I was uh, trying to sell this rally, uh, when the first uh, it did happen, first bounce, that get bounced from the lows. But well, yeah, it was above the boxes. Nothing you can do about it. You can just, if you still want to, you know, uh, fulfill your dreams, like, hey, yeah, I gotta find the reason to short it. You can do that. You you, you could have done that uh, as you like to say on your show. Regulated, regulated trade uh, during the shorter time frame uh, balance uh, or boxes, right? But then again, you be quickly to show that market keep going higher, beating those uh, boxes uh, and trading above that distribution. Long term, uh, your qu answer to your question. Uh, uh, technically and fundamentally, uh, this uh, unit is actually this uh, euro dollar uh, pair is uh, should be going uh, lower. And if you want to look uh, in the longer term, please t refer uh, distribution of price in relationship to the profiles on a weekly, and you have clear idea where the thing is going. It's not uh, actually you know no no brainer here to 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 discover the direction of the long term uh, market of this. Uh, of this particular uh, uh, pair. That's okay. the answer. We're looking at the Aussie dollar. We had a little bit of a short squeeze the other day, kind of getting above this 7650 <laughs> area, breaking stride on that regulation of the trade and, and talking about, you know, we had a, and going back to the Australian dollar, and we kind of show what happened here. We talked about this right before this announcement from the non farm payroll number. That orange bar coming off the 76 weekly on for a lot time to get out of that, but we talked about like, you know, this is just a kind of a freebie to get short again somewhere. We didn't have any inflection points to totally pay attention to on the Australian dollar, except the the 240s. We had that sitting there. We had the breakdowns below go back and retest. We were hoping, I was hoping personally, I love to trade this product, 77.39, 77.40. Didn't quite get there, but uh, that general neighborhood on the short side, again, um, you know, looks like we're going back and retesting 76. We talked about 76 was probably going to, ultimately get surpassed on the downside on the Aussie dollar that seems like that's what's going to happen our feed is a little delayed on the on the US dollar and I can't seem to get the charts up really quick this is not the current price on the US dollar but we talked about trying to yeah you know, we finally are getting our charts up here getting back above and let me kind of state this getting back above 96 38 seemingly that's happening right now this is not real time it's a little bit delayed on the u.s dollar and i was you know have been a big fan of not shorting the u.s dollar so that's kind of coming in hand in hand 96.38 now you can use that as a fence i think for this to move higher we've got a little bit of a resistance here so you have to wait uh unfair highs on the 240s 96.45 unfair lows on the daily 96.38 eddie so again i 
it's kind of a wait and see a little bit here. You just you want to see a daily close above there, and I think we could move north a little bit, even farther on the dollar. Um, and it, obviously, that's affecting some of the six, basket of six currencies that comprise the dollar, namely the euro. Let's take a look at this yen, Eddie. Man, is this? Oh yeah, like John. I was going to wait until you actually asked me something about it, but I was going to jump in, uh, in front of you and tell the best trade. I liked it. What you just actually been uh, promoting on your uh, on your show? That's dollar yen, and uh, we had a small position from the beginning, like five handles lower. I was looking for any excuse to get on it. it it's uh, as you can see, probably not not so much of the chance in there. It got into the POC what you were showing, but I was kind of yeah. waiting for the little bit the drop down into the point of into the lower end of the point of control, yeah. the demand area, missed it yeah. entirely, and now just waiting, um, uh, just getting we, traded on the long side from the longer, uh, shorter time frame. Uh, what, uh, Eddie, you know, this has been the most interesting, coolest trade on the books. Tom and I talked about this last summer at 101, and actually that was a kind of a something you and I had been looking at, um, and it just has found support or you got to trade the breakout find support on this thing. Um, and it really showed its hand lately on that relative uh, carry trade situation on the U.S. dollar that it was showing its hand like, hey, I'm not I'm not budging. I mean, I'm, I'm talking as, as if I'm the Japanese yen right now. I'm not budging and I'm kind of consolidating within a balance area to maybe have another breakout and lo and behold, 124.61. That was the breakout. If you've got the scanner, folks, I'm going to the currency section. Um, there's the USD JPY and Ooh, look at this green across the board there's that unfair high 124.61 like we just showed on the charts and it's just so cool i mean how this you know how this thing maps things out for you and here again going back to the indices the world is kind of rolling here on an intermediate basis the only thing still breath positive on the dailies are the nikkei and the shanghai the shanghai made an all-time high or traded above 5,000 a day um eddie that's just been all over the news on the uh the asian news channels over here today i've been obviously had them on all day uh so you know again but look at look at the globe right now and if we go back and try to figure out you know why is this happening got a little bit of a currency war got we're going to pull up the 10-year eddy really quick so we can take a look at this and this thing's just kind of imploding a full handle now markets don't like that markets don't like higher rates and uh Here's the situation on the ten-year. Again, that's been, your that's your baby as well. Yeah, well, I've, I've just you know I've been telling people only but can get long. But uh, John, uh, is it is no. it uh, some uh, distance right now in the curve, long and short term? I'm not well, a curve trader, but uh, looks like yeah. It. I mean, yeah. I mean, the yield curve's widening a little bit, obviously, right now. Um, let's take a look at the weeklies. That was the, you know. 127.11 we got down below i've been a big fan of of just waiting if we're going to go long again this product it looks like uh you know we're clean and clear down below profiles let's go back into the scanner i there hasn't been any reason to go long lately let's go back into the future section of the scanner and let's go into the 10-year and we're right across the board here's the inflection points you need to be aware of can't go long this right now guys Eddie, I hear the music. Thanks for coming on today. We're going to go to our last segment, and uh, I'll be talking to you after the show, obviously. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks, having man. me. Yep. Mm -hmm. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Larry Pezzavan a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Um, got a real treat here. I think Joey Zhang from Hong Kong is on the phone with us. Joey, are you there? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Great, great. Good to hear from you, my friend. How are you? I'm doing all right. We got about <laughs> four minutes. We got about four minutes left, and I uh, appreciate you calling. Let's get right into it, if that's cool with you. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into it. I, I've actually uh, uh, got a eye surgery, and uh, I went to check it out. Check out my eyes today, and uh, they said I had a detached retina. Um, my God. And, yeah, yeah, and and you know I was kind of they said I had all kinds of blood in my eyes or something, and and then I looked at your um, I came home and I looked at your uh, scanner today and and the breath scanners um, uh -huh. and they were all red and I thought it was my eyes but it's actually the market. <laughs> so yeah, so, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I mean, yeah, we've got a little bit of a volatility here after this unemployment report. It's 5.5 percent, and um, you know, if you, you know, you and I have been talking about this. This this breadth on our intermediate and some of the other ones have been flip flopping around, mainly staying negative as this U.S. stock market's well, kind of been edging higher. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, well, actually, I mean, this is the first day that uh, since uh, let's see, since September 26 that uh, the weekly breath has gone into the uh, the red yeah the, for, for the S&P 500 
for the S and P yeah. five hundred. So, so yeah. So and, that's, and, that's, today's, and today's Friday, so we, if we get a close negative, you know yeah, what that means. Yeah, if, exactly. Today's Friday, and exactly. So we, uh, you know, it's uh, it's pretty worrying, at, you know, and and we've been kind of. There's been no worries in the S and P. Everything, you know, everybody's been, um, uh, especially in the U S. market, it's been. You know, um, the European markets have been kind of showing signs of deterioration. Uh, the Nifty in Japan has, uh, I mean, uh, um, and uh, India has been showing deterioration, but uh, the U.S. has been holding in there really steady until today. Um, and uh, and today is the first day, and I, I, I'm thinking that it may just close below. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to type something out in the room here to, to kind of reiterate what you said before, which was this is the first time since September, October, we've had a weekly breadth crossover and we may have a close today. That's super important of that breadth locking in negative. Um, and, and, you know, as you know, we've been looking at this for a while doing back tests and I, I'm proud to tell you and honored that we have <laughs> done a lot of the, uh, the, uh, the breadth, strict breadth information on the breadth crossovers um here's the shanghai i'm showing right now on our screen i don't know if you're watching it i'm going to send you all these later um this is our 60 minute if i get it to pop up this is our daily on the shanghai well my screen's locked up here again for some reason anyway uh, i'm going to be sending you all these results after the show joey you're going to be astonished yeah. these have nothing to do with the profiles on the index itself is breadth crossovers, and it's it's really shocking in a good way. Um, yeah, some of the things yeah. that we're, we're going to be able to well, utilize now. And, go ahead. Well, September when it crossed, um, it went from you know uh, mid 1900s to 1800 in a matter of two weeks. So yeah, uh, so yeah, that that was uh, a pretty um, pretty good uh, cross signal there, and today is showing the same thing. So um, right. and especially. Well, it, it all matches because if you look at the yields, the yields have been flying. So, yeah, the, the yields have been breaking out, which you know fits. Yeah, I, I tell you what, Joey, we, we've got it in the show now. I think we're going to probably okay. discuss this privately after the show. It seems like. Okay, and, uh, take care. Yeah, right, thanks for calling in today. And, yeah, great, um, guys. Right. We'll pick it back up again Monday. Hang around. Larry Pizzabento is next, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.